Yoga Studio. This is made from the wood from the, the house, the, the frame is. So all the frames are made of that. It is amazing. Yes. And here's the microphone for you. If you want, I'll hold on to this. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. The role of women in Louisiana versus the rest of the United States was quite different. Women in colonial America and in the country of the United States in the 18th and 19th century were governed by common law, which gave them virtually no legal rights at all. In Louisiana, women were allowed to own property and had community property rights. <laughs> Louisiana women, including women of color, had the right to own property separate from their husbands filed lawsuits, and more. Although they did not have all the rights given to men, they were on their own, they were able to own their own businesses and run their own plantations. St. Landry Parish had a number of women of both races who did just that. One was Marie Magdalena Esprit Lamel Simeon, a Creole of color who lived in the late 18th century and part of the 19th century. According to Simeon descendant, Etha Simeon Omling, my mom, <laughs> Marie was from De Alamont on the German coast, an area which is located just above New Orleans along the Mississippi River. She was of African descent, born on the Lamel Plantation. Marie's family name was actually Esprit, a name that comes from the Esprit Plantation that was located next to that of the Lamels. Consequently, Marie used the name Esprit and Lamel interchangeably during her lifetime. Early in life, Marie became acquainted with a young Frenchman named Antoine de Simien, a merchant from the parish of Saint Jean, located just outside Marseille, France. A relationship developed, and eventually a religious union was formed between the two of them. Marie and Antoine had six children that were listed in official records as mulatto or of mixed race. Eventually, the family settled in St. Landry Parish. It's interesting to note that doing research on our family, now known as Simeon, Ethan discovered the de Simeon family in France and in Louisiana had business dealings with the Marquis de Lafayette and also with statesman and president Thomas Jefferson and statesman Alexander Hamilton. This is confirmation that the de Simeons were well connected in national and international affairs of that time. Together on the de Simeon farm in St. Landry Parish, Antoine, Marie, and their family raised sweet potatoes and cotton. Together with their slaves, they made bricks that were sold throughout the parish. In 1790, they received a license to operate a tavern, a billiard room, a haberdashery, and a cowhide chair business. On April 12th, 1791, Marie and their firstborn son were emancipated. At that time, she and her son became known as free people of color, and all of the couple's other children were born into freedom. In 1800, Marie was named executor of Antoine's will, and when he died on June 28, 1811, she took over the farm plus all of their other property and business interests. According to old state and parish records, Marie eventually owned property in at least four different townships, including nearly 1,500 acres in the community of Bellevue between Ogalusas and Church Point, 6,300 acres at Bayou de Can, west of Eunice, and some undefined property at Prairie Lamel 
southeast of Washington, Louisiana. She owned nine slaves, 40 horses, mules, and 300 head of cattle. By 1818, she had established her son, George, on another 800 acres at Bayou Mallet between Opelousas and Eunice, as documented in records at the St. Landry Parish Courthouse in Opelousas. Marie is listed in the books Creoles of Color in the Bayou Country by Carl Brasso, Keith Fontenot, and Claude Oob. Washington, Louisiana, a steamboat town by Cheryl Bim Myers, and From France to Louisiana by Etha Simeon Omling and Jurgen Omling, as well as in Gwendolyn Medlow Hall's database. Marie was a prominent land and business owner of her time, making her one of the most successful Creoles of color in the Bayou country of Louisiana. As a woman of color, she played an important role in the story of Opelousas and St. Landry Parish. Thank you. First, thank you to the committee for accepting Marie. In doing research, it's not just cold facts on paper. In doing research, it's actually putting flesh on their bones and bringing them back to life. Marie stepped out from mystery and fantasy and she walked right into reality. We are the storytellers. It is our job to tell the stories. Thank you very much. <laughs>